Okay, hello everyone, and thanks for joining us, and welcome to this WealthManagement.com Fast Chat. I'm here with Ryan Nauman, market strategist from Informa Financial Intelligence and Zephyr. Ryan, since the dawn of asset management, folks have been looking for how to think about and quantify risk. We know that there are numerous risk statistics available for advisors to use when conducting manager due diligence. So let us know how an advisor should make sense of these statistics and which ones to use. First, thank you, David, for having me on. Yeah, just like an advisor must determine the appropriateness of an, uh, of an investment for a particular client, depending on what stage of the investment journey the client is in, the same can be said for risk statistics. What risk statistic you use to conduct a manager due diligence or a manager search depends on what stage of the investment journey your client is in and what their investment objective is. For example, when looking, when looking for an appropriate manager for a client who is in the later stages of their journey and has a capital preservation objective, you should use met metrics that quantify their capital preservation tendencies of a manager. In that case, you'd want to use a statistics like pain index, which measures the depth, duration, and frequencies of all losses for a manager, as well as you can use value at risk, down capture, and maximum drawdown. Conversely, managers who are in the early stages of the journey are less concerned about capital preservation and are more concerned about appreciation. So statistics that measure a manager's upside potential like up capture, Zephyr K ratio, excess return, alpha, sharp ratio, and skewness would best benefit your uh, more aggressive clients. Yeah, there's a lot of them, uh, a lot of these statistics out there. What advice can you give to advisors when it comes to these investment analytics? Yeah, you're exactly correct. There are a lot of them. And because of the numerous amounts of risk statistics out there, paralysis by analysis is common when it comes to investment analytics due to the large number of metrics in all the different ways that you can slice and dice a manager's performance. So it's important to keep it simple and create a framework uh, for the statistics that works for you and will help you keep them organized. Uh, this, is, this will help you uh, determine what statistics to use for certain clients in situations. So for example, group all your risk versus return statistics together and make sure you understand the drawbacks to each one of those statistics and what type of client each statistic is appropriate for. Um, moving forward, group all your uh, capital preservation statistics together. Keep your volatility statistics together and make sure you understand when and what situation to use each statistic for. And finally, make sure you really understand the drawbacks of each metric. For example, standard deviation is a really good volatility metric. But at the same time, it penalizes upside deviations and downside deviations equally. So most investors, they don't mind upside deviations. So maybe more of a, a appropriate risk statistic should be downside deviation, which would be more appropriate to use because it only uh, focuses on deviations of the losses. What, you know, this is not normal times, right? Uh, we're in on usual times. What are some risk metrics you think advisors should be looking at? Uh, what should be at the top of their toolbox going into 2021? That's a great question. And you're exactly right. Despite the tumultuous 2020, equities have had a, a solid year and uh, they benefited investors and have been on a fast, fantastic run really since the great financial crisis. So, However, despite this great run up uh, since the great financial crisis and in 2020, there are speed bumps ahead. So I think it's really important for investors to continue to focus on preserving the hard earned gains since the pandemic drawdown in March and the great financial crisis that happened you know, over 10 years ago. So these are five risk statistics that I really believe should be part of every advisor's a uh, list of analytics moving into 21 to help preserve these hard-earned gains as you know these investors as they get older 
don't want to have to start over. So it's important to uh, preserve these gains. Number one is standard deviation. It's the oldest way of looking at risk. Um, number two is sharp ratio, which is the most famous return versus risk measurement out there. And what's so great about sharp ratio is that it's not dependent on a benchmark. So you can compare apples to oranges when you're looking at two different uh, types of managers. Tracking error, which is fantastic because it really measures two different things that um, investor or financial advisor really should be focused on. And that is the manager's consistency of outperformance, number one, and then number two, how active is your manager? Uh, the fourth one is pain index, which really is a great capital preservation statistic, and it measures the depth, duration, and frequency of all periods of loss. So it really um, underscores, you know, maximum drawdown is a great statistic, but pain index takes it to a whole nother step. And then finally, value at risk. And we saw this earlier in March, and why value at risk is such a great uh, statistic. It uh, measure, it's a tail risk met metric that quantifies the amount of expected loss under rare but extreme market conditions. And that's exactly what we experienced earlier this year. So value at risk quantifies those very rare but extreme um, market conditions. Okay, really good stuff. Thanks very much. Five important risk statistics to keep in mind when analyzing asset managers. Ryan Nauman, market strategist with Informa Financial Intelligence Zephyr. Thank you very much.